I'm here at a pretty nondescript spot uh, on Moe Lane. Uh, going down that way is Mile Cop. That way is Congleton. We're near a place called Asbury. And this spot is, is nothing today. But once upon a time here, or very near to here, there was a wharf in which uh, a plateway, or a tram road, um, the, the goods from the trucks of that were unloaded onto horses and carts that would go along this road. And the tram road is here. And that is the tram road that I'm going to be following in this video. It's called the Congleton Railway, by most people, or the Congleton Tram Road. And it is one of the longer ones in the area. I say in the area, it fits and it doesn't quite fit with my series of videos. Because this tram road is not entirely in North Staffordshire. In fact, most of it is actually in Cheshire. Um, and that's where we are now, at the Cheshire end. But it, it fits in with the, the kind of network of tram roads that we've been looking at, so it is suitable to study it. It's quite an early one, in the early 1800s, I think. I don't have the documents with me, I think it's 1809. And the reason that it was built was to carry coal from the collieries near to Mile Cop down to Congleton. Uh, where, of course, there was a market for those things, as the town had some industry. Now, <clears throat> that's why it was built, but you might say, well, why would you bother to do that? Because there is a canal. But actually, the, the Macclesfield Canal that runs uh, from Stoke-on-Trent through Congleton to Macclesfield and then Marple, where it joins the, the Peak Forest Canal, the Macclesfield Canal was an, actually quite a late canal. It was built in the 1830s and so at the time when this was built there was no other way of getting the coal from Malkoff all the way down to Congleton and actually the um, <coughs> the story of the canal is very much the story of this railway because when the canal was built in the 1830s the railway shut obviously the canal uh, replaced it in many ways and a new tram road was built um, <coughs> through the hill at Malkop and then down to the canal and I hope to cover that in another video but today we're talking about the Congleton tram road we don't know a lot about it um, we don't even know exactly when it did cease running because some scholars believe that it actually ceased running even before the canal was open. To me that doesn't quite make sense because why why would you build a canal all the way to Congleton and then with no alternative form of transport stop using it? But maybe maybe there was a shortage of coal or the market was low or <clears throat> maybe there was other factors such as tram roads opening up in the opposite direction to Stoke-on-Trent which was growing massively and maybe they could just sell the coal there instead and who knows but whatever the case it did close sometime around the 1830s so it was only going for about 20 years or so which is a shame because as you can see from this path it was pretty well engineered and it was one of the longer ones and more scenic canals in the area it was also a very Sorry, more scenic tram roads in the area. It was also a very interesting tram road in the respect that the rails that uh, the trains ran along were not the normal uh, tramway plates, but they were actually um, egg-shaped, oval. And they, they, the wheels of the trucks that went along it um, <coughs> were... were I don't know how the word you would use to describe it, but they were, they were kind of flanged like that, so they could fit on the uh, <coughs> on the on the plate. So it was almost I suppose it would have looked like it was almost running along tubes rather than rails. They weren't tubes; they were solid cast iron. But it would have looked like that. What is also good about this railway is that it is pretty easy to follow for the entirety of its length which is, I would say, quite remarkable when one considers that it's been, it only ever operated for about 20 odd years and it's been shut for, um, well, over 200. So that's pretty remarkable and of course one of the reasons is, it's like this bit we're on now, a lot of it 
was reused as lanes uh, or public footpaths and also although it was built to serve an industry uh, <coughs> particularly mining the um, the places in which it was built through never got developed later so it, it runs entirely through farmland if you can see on the hill up there the um, <coughs> the mast that is uh, the back end of the, the hill of Mount and that's what it had to get up that was the um, the physical obstacle and uh, <coughs> That's why it took several miles to do it. As you can see, it really is quite a climb and all the time we're climbing. And even though I'm only walking now, I can feel the climb, I can feel the gradient. And I think for the, the horses, it must have been quite tough. Although thankfully, this way, they were empties that they were hauling on. Oh, it's old. Hello. 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 You're a nice dog, aren't you? Come on. Come with me. Where's your master? 
Where's he gone? Oh, anyway, here's quite a steep gradient, this for a tram road. But they did have a lot of to go up. And that's quite interesting, this cottage is over there. Um, were they workers' cottages for the railway? I mean, there looked to be too many for just farm workers. And of course, a lot of people worked on the fields and those days. Here's the path. Oh, rabbits. So there's the farm that I've just come through. Obviously the, the footpath actually goes around the farm to that side. Um, I'm back on the trackbed. I, I think this dip is actually the trackbed. Again, this is one of those uh, situations that I've talked about in other videos whereby if you, uh, if you go in the winter, the trackbed is clear. Uh, whereas now, with it all being rather overgrown, it is far less so, um, but although it doesn't look very clear at the moment, and I may be mistaken as I often am, I think I'm actually running through, walking through a slight cutting, um, constructed, ah there we are, yes, I think this dip here, which is quite pronounced, you see it, it is the line. Can you see? And so I'm actually walking at the side of the line at the moment and I'm gonna go up to the stile there. I'm at the stile now, there's the farm and look how pronounced the cutting is. There are not actually a lot of earthworks on this line. That's probably the most interesting of them. I've also got this here, this stone. <laughs> and as we can see, this is very clearly a tram road stone. But look how the marks are quite different because of the uh, oval shaped plates with two pegs to those that we're used to finding elsewhere. You always know you're on the right track when you find one of those. So, there's the dip that the line came from. Probably at a much lower level than what we're on now. And then it, it followed along this path. It is now a public footpath, which I'm gonna follow. There is also, as you can doubtless hear, a small stream around this. I can't see, and I, I have had a look in the past, but I can't actually see any earthworks, like a culvert or something. So it may have gone across on a wooden bridge or something. But now we're on one of the better sections, because as you can very clearly see, we're on an embankment. Look, it goes up there, it's flat, and down by the stream. This is the track bed. And it's also a lot easier to walk on than the last bit. I mean, another problem, I keep moaning about the walking in the summer. And another problem with that is, um, it's really tiring actually, walking in the long grass. It's, you know, a mile on normal grass, and a mile in that is just completely different. Um, I suppose what's noticeable here as well, 
is how very narrow this embankment is. Now, part of that is, of course, because some of it's fallen away and got eroded away over the years, but it was only ever single track. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know what the gauge was, but I would imagine it really was quite a narrow gauge. This is quite a atmospheric section. I'm sure if one dug around in there, he would find stones. And there are also stones here now. I've not cleared them away, so I don't know if they are blocks from the plateway. As we just saw at the road crossing, some blocks survived. There was one very clearly there, but um, <clears throat> they don't seem to be a lot. Although, again, how much people have ever looked could be a major factor in that. Now there's some stones here. I wonder if any have holes in them. There's nothing obvious, I must say. Um, and look, <coughs> even though this is rather well engineered, look at the, ga the gradient there. I mean, that bit of the track bit obviously fell away. But we're really climbing to get back on here. So there are plenty of stones in the ground. Just can't see if they've got holes in them. We're in our own secret valley here. It's really quite magical. It's a kind of thing, place where, when I was eight, I'd have expected fairies and pixies. It's beautiful. The embankment's very clear here as we go around the, oh, the tight corner. And <clears throat> as you can see, there is a bridge here now, far from an original bridge, but the line would have crossed at this point. That stone there looks like it has the imprints of a plateway uh, block. Oh, I think this one does. Oh yes, look at that, that's very clear. That's a hole there. <laughs> so we do have a few blocks when we try to find them. But by all the going up and down that I'm doing, you can very clearly see how very eroded this track bed is. Now, I actually think that's the track bed there, but the path is leading me here. Um, it really is so indistinct, one can't tell at all, um, which is sad, but that's life, isn't it? That 
pretty much par for the course if you're trying to trace a railway that's been pulled up for 200 years. I've got these on really steep gradients uh, for a plateway. I suppose part of that is that it, it was an early line. And uh, techniques got better over the years. You can see that very clearly with the canals. Um, the early canals wind around as much as possible, whereas the uh, later ones, such as the Macclesfield, are very straight and have a, a lot of cuttings and bridges and embankments. Yes, I think actually. This is more it. We, I think we're crossing back and forth over the actual line here. Um, we're, we're certainly off it now. Um, but it ran there and then comes out. We can follow it. Oh, here's a block. I think that's a bit more modern, that actually looks like a breeze block. It's a shame, isn't it? You, you see something that you think, oh yes, right, we've, we found something. And, no. Now, this particular bit, so it, it would come out there, um, is virtually impossible to follow. We just have to trust the footpath. But then, there would have been virtually no engineering needed to cross this oh, pretty flat field. Um, reminds me of the, the field uh, next to Chase Colliery on the console plateway. You really can't tell, you knew the railway ran through there once, but you can't tell where. And all you've got to go on is a footpath. Looks like there might be a bit of an embankment there. It's negligible there, isn't it? Well, these fields have been ploughed since then, you know. Anything could have happened. We've got more long grass, but again, even I've been in, I've done this in low grass and it's very hard to follow. And you've just got to kind of trust the footpath because it's a flat field. Apart from this hole over there, um, it didn't go through there, but one wonders was that perhaps used to even quarry out material for it? So. Probably not, it's probably a mall pit. <laughs> Gotta hate long grass.
not helped and the fact that last year I really injured my legs and I couldn't walk for about three months and so walks that in the past wouldn't have bothered me I'm really knackered now oh well lucky to walk at all I suppose some people can't And we're now approaching the road and looking at the geography of this because the road really is quite sunken below us I am 90% certain that the line crossed this on a bridge I'll pick it up in a sec So here's the road crossing, there's a stile up there, there's some quite interesting looking blocks around there I haven't turned them over but they could be plateway blocks and the footpath continues this side so we'll go up here but um, it is, this is one of those bits where you're not quite sure where to follow and um, what I mean is this The footpath goes across this field here. So basically we're looking like that. And obviously it's in a railway, so I think it probably ran along the top more. But it could have run the other side of that hedge. I'll meet you again at the top. <clears throat> I'm at the top of the field now. And the railway could have run along there. But I don't think it did. What I actually think, it went across the lane at quite a diagonal and then followed this. And I think that is the track of the console railway. I'm going to try and get on it. The actual footpath is around there. And there is some interesting stuff to see over there. So we're going to have a look there. And hopefully we'll get back on this in a second. Stood by the style here, I've made a, an interesting find. I don't think it's connected uh, to the railway that I'm following, but there is a narrow gauge rail here. Um, it's a pretty, pretty long one. Um, but in fact, no, there's two. There's another one just down there. So if we get down, look, there's that one. Very, very small narrow plate, but nonetheless, definitely narrow gauge rail. But I think this is well, uh, not from the Congleton line because, of course, we know that had um, oval plates, and these are very much traditional narrow gauge ones. So, probably from the colliery, which is just over there may have had its own internal network at one time. Let's carry on just very near that last spot uh, which was just up there where I found the rail a bit further down I find yet another narrow gauge rail again I don't think it's one belonging to the Congleton Railway um, but definite evidence that there was a lot of tramway activity in this area As you can see, I'm now back on the line of the railway. It's very clear here because it's a lane. Loads of stones here, but then they're, they're later additions. Um, the footpath that I showed you actually goes around there over the little bridge and then up here. So it, I am certain that this is the track bed without a shadow of doubt. Um, it's got that engineer look about it. might say that you know after you've been following these tram roads for a while you spot it but the problem is it can work in other directions because you, you begin to spot tram roads everywhere even when there aren't any um 
this is interesting here they, uh, these look like small scale mine workings uh, I don't know if they were I'll have to do some research on that but if they were that would make sense why you would have the railway running past them because it could pick up coal from them it's obviously not the main reason it was built that was the stone trough and tower hill collieries down there but a little bit of <coughs> extra business never did anybody any harm although interestingly I mean they do look like mine work into that shadow of doubt but I can't see any um, coal slag so maybe they were frying or I mean look the rock is very red round here, so maybe they were iron workings. I don't know, is the honest answer. I'm just off the trap bed now, it's going along here and the light's getting dark but there's something really special to see here and it is a tram road rail now the question is where's it from? because if we look at it it's not your standard narrow gauge rail um, it is a plateway one but I don't know whether you would say that is oval or egg shaped. Is that a Congleton Railway plate? It could well be, or it could be from something later. Um, it's not your standard one, not your standard narrow gauge rail. That's the important thing. Um, that needs to be in a museum. It's too bloody heavy to carry. That's the problem. I'm now further down the same field and I've come across another one. It's another rail. And this one is again the same type as the one that was lying down there. I think these probably are the um, the rails from the Congleton Railway um, and I I don't know how they would be fastened on because um, they're, they're called to be egg shaped it's not really very egg shaped is it but um, whether the, the wheel would sit on like that or whether it would sit on like that I don't know um, they were pegged in, as we know, because we've seen the, um, the the blocks with two holes in. But then the pegs, um, there's nowhere that I can see where there would be pegs on these. It's also very, very long uh, for a plate. I mean, I would piece that out. About five metres, I would say. Um, is that not too long for a play? Maybe they were from a later line. I mean, just across there, I believe there was a line um, that <coughs> could have been from a later date. But whatever the case, both of those should be in a museum. They're obviously both from the same line. And it's fascinating what you find lying in the fields in the English countryside.
should note we're actually climbing still to the top and the gradient really is considerable I wondered if there was a, a culvert down there, there isn't No wonder I was struggling. That is what you call an obliterated track bed. Uh, we're back on the line now. Looks like people have been driving diggers up and down. I don't know what. Now there are lots of stones here, but none of them look like what I'm after. make the track bed out here it's very clear but can you see how are we going that's it all right I think oh. I don't know how much further I'm going to be able to go with this certainly last time I struggled and we'd had less rain than when we have now I'll do what I can do See, it's quite clear now isn't it Quite nice. see the, uh, the mast on the hill dead ahead so remember how high up and far away that was last time we looked um, we really have made a lot of height up here and the I don't know if you can see it but the, the row on the horizon there that is the ridge Malcott Ridge which essentially is the uh, the summit of the line now <clears throat> we have something interesting here um, and it's a rail and it is a very 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 rusty rail but I don't think it's one of ours. I'm now at the very top of the ridge 
of Mau Cop and um, as you can see I can see right the way out to the Welsh mountains but I'm actually interested in somewhere a bit closer to home and that's down there so that direction's Congleton that direction's Mau Cop and we're looking at the line of the railway as it gradually came up to meet um, this road uh, that I'm on now and I, I think this um, this metal road actually follows the path for a second so we're going to go up there um, to where it met the road that I'm now on so I'm looking back towards Congleton where the lines come from and we're going up towards Malcolm as you can see here's the metal road that I just showed you earlier from the top of the ridge and we're actually going to join the top of the ridge now the line probably went more through that garden there um, now it's the drive to Corderwell Farm. So, but we are now pretty much once again on the track bed of the Congleton Railway. And I mean, to me, what's really clear is just how severe some of the gradients are of that line. Um, some really really serious gradients going on there now um, and I suppose that's because it was a very early line and you've got to think in 1803 I mean they hadn't even built the Macclesfield Canal uh, at that time the um, the Trenton Mersey Canal was only a few decades old and engineering was in a totally different place than it is now and perhaps the best place where you can uh, see that is uh, at the Calden Low Tramways, where there was four built in between um, the late 18th century and the 1840s. And you can see just the leaps forward in engineering knowledge that were required to build those tramways. However, I'm digressing a little bit. Um, we're at an interesting place here because somewhere around here on that side, um, <clears throat> probably near to where that uh, gateway is was where it is said that the um, <coughs> the Falls tram road which led uh, to a colliery of that name in Biddulf branched off now this is very interesting because for me at least the Falls tram road really provides a bit of a mystery we know it existed, people are said to have found plates from there, there are sketches of them, but I've walked where it's meant to have run and to me there is no evidence whatsoever that any tramway ever ran there and it's not like the land's been ploughed a lot or anything of that nature, it just it looks totally unsuitable, it's just very steep fields you know, if you think this is steep absolutely nothing compared to the Falls Tram Road which makes me think that it must have been an inclined plane all the way but then you would have thought that if it was an inclined plane all the way somebody would have mentioned that and it would have been referred to perhaps as an inclined plane uh, as most you know most inclined planes people pretty much know where they were but no the uh, Falls Tram Road um, is not referred to in that way at all. Now, I've crossed the road for a reason. And that is because, probably somewhere there, the tram road left the road and ran alongside it. Now, there are maps that show it as running along the road. And again, as I've said in other one of my videos, this would be a lot clearer um, if I were walking this in the winter. Because the lie of the land is much clearer then but basically there, there is a slight dip and you can see the way running by the side and it would make sense for it to run alongside a road rather than along it as we can see very clearly now it isn't running along this side because look at how undulating that land is you know there was certainly never a tram road there but um but on the other side see just along there we can't see it now you can see it a bit better um when there's a field divide there there is a track bed i 
I suppose the other reason why it ran alongside is it would help make the gradient a lot easier or a little easier <clears throat> another mystery with the Falls tram road of course is that apparently the, the plates were different to the plates uh, on the Congleton line um, which of course were famously ovoid, egg shaped um, whereas the, the Falls ones or at least the sketches that I've seen were far more like standard tramway plates um, <clears throat> And if that was the case, why the hell did they ever meet up? What would be the need? You know, um, one might say, perhaps, if the Falls line was later, that then the Congleton line uh, would be relayed for the section um, where the Falls line came to the top, and then along to... Um, to... Uh, Stonecroft Tower Hill where we're going um, that, that could be an explanation uh, I don't know I don't know, maybe it was relayed yeah, I, it's not clear to see at all because of the undergrowth but around there it, it does dip and like I say when, when the undergrowth is low it, to, to be honest I think it's quite distinct anyway, let's continue on our way Ah, yes, it's quite clear there. Look, if you can see where my finger's pointing, there's the line. Um, <coughs> and you can see that that has really been engineered and there is a, a genuine dip there. And that's the clearest section, so it, it was running along that field. And, and if you compare that with the road we're on, you can see the road is, is climbing more. But the field's a lot easier to engineer along, so... I think that's probably why it happened. And yes, see the line again. We're really quite clear there, as you can see. It is quite distinct. And perhaps when we get to the crown, I'll turn back and get a better view. Yes, yes, that's quite clear, look. And of course it's going to go head off. And can you see the, the field boundary there? It, it, it will then more or less follow that fence. I must admit, I'm quite glad to be walking along the road again because with this wet weather it's been really muddy and hard going in the fields. The only problem is I think everyone will be looking at me walking along with the camera thinking, who is this weirdo? One of the dangers of a, of a plate weighing enthusiasm. This is interesting, look at this, it almost looks as if there's a branch off coming up there. Probably wasn't, um, probably just a lane but you never know, there could have been a small scale mine or you know, something. So yeah, it's not, not as clear here at all, um, but although the undergrowth's low, so it should be, but I believe it ran along this fence here, this fence. 
Oh, it's not cleaver than I expected. It never would have been. You no need for any engineering there. As you see, it's, it's actually getting closer to the road again. There's a reason for that. One of the things with tramways is you're always used to looking for bits of stone um, to see if they're plateway blocks. Um, the problem with this one, because we're on an area of dry stone walls and you know we're on the top of a ridge, it's pretty stony anyway. There's stone everywhere. Well, I, I mean, I don't know whether it was on wooden sleepers or dry stone blocks, I'll be honest with you, but um, whatever the case. Um, I don't know any blocks being found here. So, and again, this is one of the places where it gets hard to follow, but I think it ran right alongside there. And so, at this point, it was running really just by the road where my finger is pointing along there. And then it would go into, um, into the garden. I mean, that house is much later. That's mid, a mid-20th century house, so that wouldn't have been there then. Oops, somebody has their house built on top of the Congleton Railway. At least I believe they do. Quite disappointingly, particularly considering the huge number of uh, tramways in this area. There are no signs of any rails here. Although one of the reasons for that may be because um, the ones that have been found have all been put in the museum. And I should love to go to the museum at Mount Cop, uh, but unfortunately, every time I've tried to go, it's been shut. But I do believe they have a number of plateway rails in there, including some of the egg-shaped ones from this line. Um, right, now, it gets a bit more interesting again, because we're, we are going to rejoin the line, which is running just the other side of this hedge here, in a second. And we do it by going down this lane. The line did not run on the lane, it probably ran just across there. We're on a heritage trail. How marvellous. Now I can really feel this, but we're, we're dropping again. We're dropping gradient, and <clears throat> that's because the main hill of Mount Cop is away there to my right, and we've skirted that thing. Because, of course, the hill itself is not our destination, but instead the collieries that were to the south. Um, and it's the two ones that really matters, Tower Hill and Stone Trot. Um, but there were lots of collieries in this area, there really were. They were just two, but they were two of the bigger ones, and I might say they are the two that mattered. So it, it would be running alongside us, so there's absolutely no evidence, unfortunately, here, um, of what once was.
because we can see the line down there from Fempo's. So after rising, it fell and it ran. I mean, as you can see, all this has been messed about because of this, you know, lots have been tarmacked over and so on and so forth. But um, there is actually a bit of an earthwork in that field. Um, good so it is my belief that maybe those earthquakes aren't we now we can come down there we rejoined the line as it crossed the road either that or it came across here but I think we actually there. And where the hell do we go now? I thought it was a path here. Oh, yeah. Right, so I am now in the field behind the scrapyard where I stopped before at the end of that lane um, there those buildings there are the back of that scrapyard I think there's some kind of kennels there was a lot of barking um, I've not filmed through this field because just look how overgrown it is there's nothing you can really make out uh, but essentially this is the root of the line so I'm just standing um, just off the root of the line um, Stopping here because this is quite interesting. If we have a look over here, um, yes, the llamas are pretty interesting. I don't think they were around in the early 1800s, but this path going off there is is intriguing because it's it's engineered. It's on a little embankment. It looks to me very much like a plateway, um, but I don't know of any anything where that there is recorded as there being a plateway there. Whether it joined this one, I doubt it did actually. It was probably just a short one for mine working. And it would have gone across to the road there, but I, I can't understand why it would have been built. But certainly something was built there. Don't know why. I'm on the track bed now. As you can see, that's kind of impassable. Got an interesting looking stone there. Well, I can't see any holes in it. I don't think it's on the blocks. So what I'm going to do is continue here. Um, as close as I can on the track bed. Another stone down there. Is it to do with the railway? Who knows? Now, in the winter, as I've said so many times, this is much, much better. Um, because the grass is low. At the moment, the grass is really high. It's actually quite hard, walk, hard work to walk through this. But the line of the trees, to the right that is the railway and, and it actually looks if you see there it looks like it, there is a slight embankment that if you um, you know cleared all the vegetation there would be something to see um, but at the moment there's very very little except grass I'm not going to keep on filming this because we're not on the path anyway, and you can't see anything. But if you see down the bottom end of the field, where the uh, horse riding equipment is, I'm going to pick it up there. Okay, so I'm at the bottom of the field now. There's the horse riding equipment. 
and if we spin round you can see the hedge that I've just walked along through the, the long grass and so just where the style is that is the way of the line and we can see it going off down there that's where we're going to walk in a second however before we do have a look at this this very clear embankment that I'm actually standing on now and curving off in that direction to the stone building or ruins of the stone building there now this is another tramway this is the 1830s one um, that's generally called the Maucock tramway that was essentially built to fulfill the same function as the Congleton railway because when the canal was built then this tramway was built built to go from where that building is there the, the collieries um tower hill colliery round through the hill which is up there and down to the canal and therefore cutting out the necessity of the long long journey that we've just walked all the way from Consul. i'm going to do another video on this particular line uh, so i'm not going to continue with it now just to point it out instead we're going to head off in that direction okay uh, so i've climbed over the uh, the style i'm able to start filming again there so there's the later maucop tram road going off there and um, there's the way that we've come so we're, we're on the track bed now um and let's carry on this way now um this is quite uh, quite an interesting little section um for me because it it just really demonstrates why it is so important to film um to film these journeys because it changes so quickly now when i last walked along this the um the embankment was as it is now very distinct um and it was just a footpath it was left alone but as with so many fields near to cities this has been used for horses and although the embankment is as you can see very very distinct and it's getting really churned up by the hooves and one wonders how distinct it will be in a few years time and then of course the other um danger is like this one here um which is both a I suppose a blessing and a curse because what they've done is they've turned it into a lane here uh, and paved it over which is nice but it, it it loses some of the atmosphere i think but it is very distinct that this was the railway you know we are on a very distinctive uh, embankment i don't think there was any blocks on this section just because that bit there that was really tuned up by the horses hooves had revealed no stones whatsoever and considering the fact that they built a plateway right next to it not that much later they could have reused stones for that and there's also plenty of buildings going on around here so i think people might have had them over the years it's accessible by road so they could have been sold um so in that way i suppose you know if we dug down under all this uh, hardcore that they've put down probably wouldn't find anything but even so a bit of a shame still it preserves the route i suppose the other problem when you've got horses is you've got these electric fences everywhere and if you're not careful they hurt and uh, i've already been zapped once it wasn't very nice We're going to meet the lane now. It is a bit weird making this into some big lane with a gate at the end and then there's no entrance onto the uh, the main lane at all. Don't get that. Why would you bother? Anyway, well, here we are. So I'm on the track bed. And there is a hedge. So let's just look back where we've come and you can see the, the hedge line as we, we go up near to the uh, the tower, which we saw at the very beginning of, uh, of our journey along the line. And we've now hit the road. I'll pick it up again in a sec. 
So I'm at the other side of the road now. You can see where the uh, line crossed over and we're following it along. I'm on the very last stages of its journey. Um, while we do it, have a look up there. Now that is the building that I showed earlier and that has a history connected with tram roads but I'll be talking about that in the Mount Cop video and the uneven ground is because you are looking at um, a colliery there now I'll be honest I think that was Tower Hill and this is Stone Trough I always get the two mixed up so it could be the other way around but either way it doesn't matter much essentially those collieries were the reason that the lines were built both the Mount Cop one and this these are the reasons why they bothered constructing several miles of railway um, to bring coal down to the market in Congleton and uh, that's pretty amazing um, of its own accord but what is also quite remarkable I think is that this line actually misses that colliery on the top of the hill so did it even have actually serve it and the other one the other line goes over this one and goes to that and then misses the other colliery now whether there was a short line between them I don't know um, but it just strikes me as rather strange so did this line only ever serve one colliery I don't know So I'm over the stile and I'm actually on the very last section of the Congleton tram road and as you can see the root of the tram road is quite distinctive even despite the high vegetation you can really tell that we're on an embankment um, but look see down there how low the land is uh, and also here makes me wonder is there a culvert or was there there isn't now because as you can see the embankment's made of rubble but whether it always was now I'd love to explore down on this side um, to see if there's a culvert but of course there's all these electric fences there, and do you know what I've been that once it's not happening again now, one reason why um, the later line may not have served this colour is, look, that to me is very much, we see that embankment, a plateway. So there was probably a branch off from the later line, but that doesn't explain why this one didn't go up there. when I first came here with Frank Underwood uh, as a lad he introduced it to say Mike you, you're going to the the crew junction of tramways it was perhaps a little bit of an exaggeration but there is some truth in it oh, look at that embankment that is a fine embankment you know There we are. Look at that. And of course what you've got there, the the lower slopes of some of the slag heaps. This really was a well established and substantial colour in its day. Um, which is why I suppose they had the money to invest to build such a long line. And it must have had quite a quantity of coal coming from it because as well um, <coughs> one wouldn't, I don't think, spend a fortune building a line all the way to Congleton if you could, if you just had enough to sell in Stoke, which is far nearer. Um, and so one assumes they had enough to sell in both places. We really are skirting the colliery now. You can see the 
the slag heaps are there next to us and back in the day this really would have been a hive of industry and those would have been several times higher than they are now Interesting blocks. No, not a plateway one, although you never know. I bet in that lot there's some. Be worth looking. Of course, we might not actually be following the line of the land now because these um, workings could have been afterwards. I mean, it could be that they they put slag heaps on on the line of the railway afterwards. Um, although the fact that a public footpath exists suggests that they didn't and of course they could have kept the section within the colliery just to move coal around the colliery but we, we do always get the same problem when we come to um, parts like this we really don't know anyway Yeah, more or less at the end of the line. We're virtually certain to be off the, uh, the line now because we're beyond the colliery. But there we are. That is the end of the Congleton Railway. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I hope it it's given you something. I hope it's inspired you to come and walk some tram roads. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. There'll be more coming later.